Hello dear viewers, I'm just going through Jonathan Ruprecht's latest course, that's airspace and chart reading for drone pilots. Something that will be of use if you're considering taking your part 107 or have taken your part 107 or just flying around and want to know more about airspace. It's only $59.99 I think, it was something like that. Uh, I could be wrong, I'll put a link to it in the comments below but this is basically what it looks like he hasn't given me permission to make this video so I'm, he might shout at me and in fact you and i here we go <laughs> we're clicking through the uh <laughs> the first page uh ourselves um so let's just have a look all oh, look achievements and progress there's 87 points to go through there's uh intro and basics quiz intro b c and d airspace quiz e survey ENG, airspace lookalikes. I'm sure there's none that look like celebrities. Uh, airspace dimensions, restricted and prohibited areas. Part 73, survey 90, part 91 and 99 flight restrictions, special air traffic rules. Airspace is complex and can change. And so on and so on and so on. I've some, some examples down at the bottom. So should we click that and see? Oh, okay. Oh, look, and he's created. He's created videos on each. Jonathan's gonna, he's not gonna be happy. <laughs> hey, oh, he, he, no, yeah, here it comes. I don't think you're gonna get any audio from this. Let me click play. I guess that's what it's waiting for me to do. Ah, look, that's what it'll look like coming up in there. But this will be my jolly, oh, there we go. But this will be my jolly slow uh, internet connection that won't be helping this cause. So I'll click away from this uh, because because really it won't help at all. Operation requirements. So look, 87 points. Looks very, very useful. I'm going to plough through this and see how I get on um, and speak to Jonathan about this. But looks like if you're taking your part 107, um, let's, see if we, let's, let's see if we can't get that there price. Let's get that there price. All courses. Let's have a look. Yeah, and A59. Oh no, it's not on his website. <laughs> Whoa, it's so new, it's not on his website yet. But I'm pretty sure it was a 59.99, course. Hmm. I am going to ask Jonathan before I release this video. Perhaps it's all too soon. Don't forget to join us. 2100 GMT every Tuesday for our drone stuff this week. Chat of nonsense. Uh, have a lovely rest of the week. Cheers for now. Bye bye. Welcome to the Airspace and Chart Reading for Drone Pilots course. This course is designed for drone pilots who are struggling to understand the different types of airspace, how to identify that airspace on the chart, and even how to do a pre-flight search of the available material out there so the operation is safe and legal. In this course, we'll cover one, the many different types of airspace classifications with their graphical examples, two, the basic operational requirements and issues for airspace, Three, resources available to inform you of the airspace. Four, how to do a pre-flight assessment of some airspace. And five, some real-world examples of very complex airspace surrounding major cities. Being that I'm an attorney, I need to give you a disclaimer. I'm not your attorney. We don't have any type of attorney-client privilege. If you need legal help, you should contact an attorney before you fly. The pictures of aeronautical charts that we'll discuss in this course might have changed since this course was first created. You should not rely on them for navigation or for pre-flight planning. And here's a pro tip. You shouldn't rely on anything else but official government sources. There are a lot of helpful websites out there that have information on airports, but they are not kept up to date. Not being proficient at finding reliable government sources can not only cause you legal problems, it also could potentially cause you less income. Let me give you an example. I had a person hire me to file for an airspace authorization to fly near an airport. They checked out the airport on some airport guide website, which had a picture of the airport being class echo airspace at the surface, which would normally require a certificate of authorization from the FAA to fly there. Well, it turns out the airport's airspace changed sometime after that picture was published on that website. That individual did not fly for some time when in reality they could have flown all along if they would have used reliable resources. Being ignorant on the law is financially and legally foolish.
We'll discuss in this course where you can get some official reliable sources for aeronautical information. Here is section 1's outline. We'll first talk about the different types of airspaces, then move on to restricted and prohibited airspaces, and also flight restrictions. I'm talking about those together and comparing them because people typically confuse them and their characteristics. We'll next move on to special air traffic rules, which cover special airports and geographic areas around the United States. After that, we'll cover special use airspace. The use inside those areas of airspace is what makes them unique and why they need to be charted on the maps. As we go through and learn all of this, I'll clear up the confusion that you might have about whether airspace can be both and something or either something. In other words, can airspace have multiple classifications at the same time or does it have to be at different times? Airspace is unique and there are a lot of unique things to it so we'll cover everything else left over in the other airspace areas to make sure you can identify those locations on the map. For example, space launch areas, military training routes, parachute jump operations, etc. Lastly, we'll cover air traffic control and the national airspace system. This is for section one. We need to first define national airspace. Where does the airspace of the United States extend out to, how high, and what geographic areas? Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 107.1 says, Part 107 applies to the registration, airman certification, and operation of civil small unmanned aircraft systems within the United States. Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 1.1 says, The United States, in a geographical sense, means 1. The States, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the possessions, including the territorial waters in the airspace of those areas. Your next question will be, how far out does the airspace extend off the coast? The preamble to the small unmanned aircraft rule said, under Presidential Proclamation 5928, the territorial sea of the United States and consequently its territorial airspace extends to 12 nautical miles from the baselines of the United States determined in accordance with international law. Thus, UAS operations that occur within 12 nautical miles from the baselines of the United States will be considered as operations occurring within the United States consistent with the applicability of Part 107. Keep in mind that if you are a manned aircraft pilot or operating your unmanned aircraft under Part 91, so such as for Section 333 exemptions or a public certificate of authorization, you want to see Section 91.1 as some of the regulations apply out to only 3 nautical miles while others extend out to 12 nautical miles. We can broadly classify airspace as either regulated or non-regulated. Interestingly, some of these things may overlap and apply to the same airspace at the same time. The FAA regulates airspace in Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations in Parts 71, 73, 91, 93, and 99. Part 71 lays out Class A, B, C, D, E, and G airspace. Part 73 explains prohibited and restricted airspace. Part 91 explains multiple types of temporary flight restrictions. Part 93 describes special flight traffic areas around the United States. Part 99 explains special security instructions in defense areas for national security. Additionally, other federal agencies have regulations which can govern how you fly your aircraft over what they have been entrusted with protecting, such as wildlife refuges, marine sanctuaries, or even whales. The FAA also designates on the chart certain types of non-regulatory airspace, which helps you identify certain types of risky activity that happen in these areas. Now we're going to have a quick quiz to make sure you understand the material you just learned. In real life, and also on the knowledge exam, you will have access to reference material. Yes, it's nice to memorize and know everything, but all sectional charts have a legend on them, and you're allowed to... Use the knowledge exam reference material at the test center, which has a sectional chart legend in it. You shouldn't work hard. You should work smart. Familiarize yourself with the reference material because you'll be allowed to use it in all quizzes in this course.